very rarely like all of those things. <laughs> I don't like the long list of things and all the stuff I've done, I'm just normal, I'm just like you. The only thing is I, I've been through too much stuff to be ordinary. Um, and you know, that's what everyone's going through. Everyone's going through stuff, right? Agree? Uh, there's some people going through more stuff than us and uh, they're around the world. Um, so today is actually uh, not exactly the day that um, it is Environment Day, but it is, it was yesterday, but every day it should actually be Environment Day to be honest. Um, we have a situation around the world that is, um, I was wondering, which one is it? Is it the top middle. or the, the middle one? The middle one's the red one. Right. Right is? Do you know the Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I know we have a different type of uh, slide changer. Anyway, so what, what I'm saying is that every day actually should be an environment day. Every day is a day and an opportunity for you to connect to nature now. Um, Robin had alluded to the fact that I'm a fifth degree in Okinawan Gojuro Krati Do, also in Yamanaka Hashido Jiu Jitsu, also practicing Kobudo. These are, all worth it. These are all part of the martial way. The martial way involves uh, saying no to conflict or avoiding conflict. Many people have the wrong idea uh, about martial arts. Martial arts actually is about flowing around the rock. So if you've got two rocks, essentially, people view it as being collision, but it's not. It's about actually flowing around it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the martial arts is actually based around nature. Um, and when you're actually doing a lot of your forms, your katas, um, you actually are in a meditative state so your mind is still like water. And the thing is, when you actually go into nature now, you begin to actually connect with the stillness of the environment. Whether you are coming from a faith perspective, they're actually going in to do some prayers, you go deeply into the quietness and the stillness of the splendor. And it enriches you as an individual, it, it lifts your spirit, it lifts you as you begin to fall into this balance, because oftentimes we're so busy. Our minds are busy, aren't they? Mm. Our minds are completely occupied. And the problem with that is that if our minds are busy and they're occupied with many things, it's like a, a bin which is full of paper. And so it's very difficult then to access pieces of information because there's too much going on, there's lots of distractions. And so the theme of the whole thing is about connecting with nature. There's many people around the world that don't have the opportunity to connect because you look at these factories, you look at these things that push out gas. And so you take a deep breath in and you start to cough. Everyone take a deep breath in. And bring that. <laughs> Has anyone had a massage before? Yes, yes. And you know, sometimes the masseuse says, breathe in and out, and three times three in, in, in inhalations and ex ex exhalations, and, and it makes, the, makes you feel good. But oftentimes, people breathe in, and when they exhale, it's... <coughs> I'm being serious. The problem, the crisis associated with fossil fuels actually condemns millions and millions and millions of people. It's not going through. It could. Mm -hmm. but, uh, okay, could I do the next slide thing? Um, it doesn't seem to be working too well for me. Um, this, is, this is the problem. Do the next slide for me, please. There's millions and millions and millions of people that are condemned to fossil fuels. Essentially, hospitals, schools, communities, some parts of India where they only are burning biomass, where you've got wood burning and coal burning, and what does that mean for them? It means that the young people suffer from lung conditions. It means people die, it means babies die. It causes asthma. It causes complications with even the blood because you know that you know that um, the blood needs one essential component. What is that component? Oxygen. 
of course. And so it leads to other problems. And it condemns millions and millions and millions of people. Next slide. And so, if you're to look at it, 25% of cars are attributed to 90% of the bad air that we breathe. And the, my colleague actually that I spoke earlier, I know, would have probably mentioned electric cars, which is a viable solution to addressing the issue of pollution from vehicles. We have aeroplanes that spit out jet fuel, which then freezes in the atmosphere as contratrails, which then, as it now is heated and as it falls, it falls now to the earth, and in some parts, there is so much combination of pollution that you've got acidic rainfall. It causes big problems with babies, with asthma, with lung conditions. It is a huge problem. And so, next slide. We have to take pollution very seriously. It impacts every area of our life, every fraction of our life. It impacts the earth. Next slide. It imp impacts air pollution. It impacts water pollution. It impacts also soil pollution. Now, of course, if it's impacting the air pollution, that means that it's going to impact our bodies, right? Our lungs. If it impacts then water, what does that mean for us? If we are made of how much percentage? How much? How much? Yeah. Is everyone awake? Is everyone awake? Yes. How much water is represented in our body? So not everybody knows that. Seventy-five. Take it. I'm a very interactive person, <laughs> so I want to make sure that everyone's awake. You know, yeah. as we're getting towards the evening, it's a long day, and I'm trying to keep myself awake. <laughs> so I want to make sure that you're awake. Okay. Yeah. So seventy yeah. percent. Now, if the water is, if the water is bad. What is that going to do for our bodies? If we're drinking bad stuff, what's going to come out of us? Bad stuff. What's it going to do inside of us? It's going to do bad things inside of us. And water has so much qualities. We don't drink enough of it, but yet still there's people that don't have water. Soil pollution. So we've got plants and we're putting it in the soil. And what happens then is we've got toxic plants. And we might have our plants which are not giving us the right nutrients, they're not giving us the right minerals, we're not grabbing the right content from the plants, and so that's causing problems. The problem is vast. Next slide. Who suffers the most? It oftentimes is the most needy. The 1.3 billion people around the world that have less than, and earn less than 1.25 dollars. And when you look at this, how much money do we spend on energy? What's your energy bill? How much money do we spend per kilowatt hour by not turning off the plug? Did you know that a plug, if you leave it on, can you see that plug yeah, down there? Yeah. Is, the, is, the radio, is the heater on? The heater's not on, this is wasting electricity right now. Mm. Because there's power still moving through it, but there's not power being pulled from it, but there's power still moving through it. So, through it. And, and in the same way, when we, when we actually leave a room, do we turn the light off? When it is the morning time and we're waking up, do we put the light on or do we open the curtains? Who opens the curtains? I do. Alright, put your hands up. Okay, the people, alright, I know who's lying now, right? because the people that do it put their hands up and mother said, I do. Sometimes, how many people sometimes open the curtains? How many people, all right, how many people normally put the light on first? Okay, and, and there's truthful hands going up, and you know, honesty is a, is a, is a, is a good thing, and, and you know, when we're honest, we actually use too much power, we waste power. You know, the average household could power a village with LED lights. So billions of people are condemned every day and it fractures the entire ecosystem. Can you uh, just click it again? So twice for me please. 
and another one. Right. The billions and billions of people basically suffer and the entire ecosystem collapses as a result of that. I've been to Mumbai, India, and I've seen at the nighttime streets paved with poor people and pollution surrounding them. I've been over to Elefanta Island and I've, I've crossed the water and seen the, the, the uh, debris in the water. I've been to Kibera slums in Kenya. I was there a couple of weeks ago. And looking at the amount of pollution that is there, it's oftentimes the people that don't have much that are impacted and it destroys their, it destroys, just slide again, thanks. It destroys their whole system. So now that we've got an idea of what the problem is, and I could go further in, I could go much deeper, I'll give you many more statistics. But I'm gonna cover um, some of the areas of renewables that are uh, components that really could help to resolve most of the issues that exist in the world in terms of pollution, climate change, poverty, in fact, because if, when we can actually begin to look at alternative sources of power, it impacts life, doesn't it? It means that a baby has got power in an incubator. It means that a house doesn't need a diesel generator to power their home anymore. It means that the rural village no longer needs kerosene lanterns, right? And it means that the babies and the young people using the kerosene lanterns are not going to breathe in dangerous fumes which are going to damage their bodies. So I'm talking about wind power, which is a viable solution to energy. You know, we've got this philosophy of kinetic energy. Who, who studied physics at school? Remember kinetic energy? What's kinetic energy? Movement. 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 Yeah, exactly. So we can get power from movement. In fact, we've got dynamos as well that can produce energy. If you wind up a dynamo, then you can actually produce energy. And you can combine kinetic energy devices or kinetic energy producing devices to actually power more things. For example, if you've got a wind turbine, wind tur turbine can produce energy. It powers now a dynamo producing energy. You've got other areas of power, which is solar power. Uh, solar power is very effective, and I'll be touching on solar power. In fact, I've listed the two probably best penetrating um, and, and probably two of the best types of renewable energy powers, the ones which are probably the most sustainable and scalable, uh, solar and, and, and uh, wind power. And, and, and my company is actually focused around solar, so I'm going to expand around solar a bit later as I go deeper into the presentation. You've also got geothermal energy, and you've also got hydropower. And hydropower requires normally quite a lot of infrastructure. You have like a dam built, you might have uh, some huge turbines which are pushing and powering then the water as it's flowing through. It requires quite a lot of energy. Uh, but oftentimes in the areas where we need to have good power, these countries are hot and they don't have much water, or they don't have much rivers or flowing water. One hour of sunlight is enough to power the entire earth for a year. Did you know that? How many people knew that? Nobody. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that. One hour of sunlight, if we had the ability to capture it, could power the entire earth for a whole year. That's amazing, isn't it? So we need the inventors, the innovators, <laughs> to come up with something that can collect all that energy because they will put all the energy companies out of business. <laughs> the bad ones <laughs> that are destroying the planet. Next slide. So I run a company called Genix. And I'll explain a little bit about what we do because it plays into this in terms of lifting other people up and, and, uh, and helping and encouraging people um, to do things. This company is called Genix. So if you just play the video for me there, you can kind of see what we do. And, um, and then I'll go a bit further into solar technology. Let's wait for that to load. Hopefully it's got sound as well. Five billion people don't have 
have access to electricity. 1.5 million deaths per year are attributed to indoor pollution, which is coming from these kerosene lanterns. 4,000 people per day by the year 2030 will die due to indoor cooking, which comes from bio fuels. Again, burning wood, coal. The problem with this is that doctors can't perform operations and can basically go off. Limited access to energy creates bigger problems. Pollution causes so much. So what we try to do with eugenics is we try to teach young people how to build the electronics, assemble products, and the circuitry. And uh, in developing markets where they have the greatest need, we teach young people. We've got in Africa where women are given the opportunities by teaching them how to install solar, you know, diffuse then renewables into communities that are uh, reliant upon fuel-based things that you burn, coal that damages your lungs, and we diffuse that into communities to change your mindset, to shift from things which damage our bodies, damage the environment, to things that will help to keep it clean, and that's genetics. Excellent. We go back to the slides, and I'll break down a little bit about solar and, and um, how you can actually use that in developing communities, how you can actually connect um, further in, in, in technology. So, uh, we, we teach and train them how to install and to put this stuff in. So when was, I'm going to ask you a question, when was, when was solar first used? We just take some random uh, guesses from the audience. 1995? 1995, we were one for 1995. Sir? Thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. Like that. Ancient civilization. Ancient civilizations. These guys are well read. <laughs> Remember there's a statement that says those who read lead. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. Um, correct. Thousands of years ago. When you go back to ancient Egypt, you found that they used the papyrus plant to actually uh, power um, a lot of their uh, homes. And um, Many of the houses were built in a way whereby they would store up um, the energy of the sun in the daytime and release it at night time. So it meant that they could have a warm hot shower. Can you imagine that? In the ancient world. <laughs> You're not taught this in school, are you? Um, I think this knowledge is suppressed somehow because you know, we don't want people to, to stop using um, gasoline <laughs> and uh, you know, fossil fuels. But anyway, it's, am it's amazing. Um, go on to the next slide, and they used to use the papyrus plant, which um, you still find in, in, in parts of Africa. And uh, you guys are laughing, are you laughing, are you laughing at? No, I'm very yeah. Sorry? You're very passionate about that. Okay, good, so you're smiling with my passion. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good, I like that. You know, this isn't, I, 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 I feel limited here, you know why? Because I like to move. <laughs> I, I like to move, I find, it, I find myself a bit limited, because if you're recording, it's going to mess up the video, so I, I can't, I'm limited. If I had a robot, it might be easier. But, you see, when we stay still, we become stagnant and we start to smell. <laughs> if we don't open the windows and get fresh air, it starts to smell. If you don't create some type of movement... Hello? Quick question. Yes. So if um, solar was used thousands of years ago, why is it not as common? That, well, that's a good question. I think that it's been limited. I think that the oil companies have um, suppressed it, and that's the truth. They have suppressed it. You know, solar technology has been around for a long time. They've used it on satellites way back. Um, you know, launching satellites into space. Um, solar has been around for a long time. 1970s on Casio calculators, um, keeping the, you know, it on. But it's it's how people um, again. It's it's, a, it's access to information, and it's also. Um, very elite um, 
uh, companies, people that exploit communities, that exploit people. And I, I say this with a lot of passion. Um, anyway, they, they, they found several different designs for solar. Um, the, 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 uh, the, there was a king known as Imhotep who basically had many of these um, solar papyrus, um, uh, you know, things which would go on the top of houses and, and they, would, they would use that. Next slide. And so they would put the cells on top of the houses and they would then um, heat it up using um, solar thermal heat. You had in the ancient um, West again, in South America, we had the solar chamber, which uh, again was used to store heat, energy. So there's basically two different types of, what I do this just change it, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry, it's my new action. Right? Okay, okay. Um, so there's two different types of uh, energy um, collection in terms of solar. And I'm a solar guy, that's why I'm talking solar, I'm not talking wind. Wind is good. Um, but yeah, I love solar. <laughs> and I love solar, solar is great. Um, and um, it, can, it can improve lives, it really can, it can change lives. And it's a viable, cheap solution. You know, wind power, to get the power that you need, you require very big turbines. And it's a more viable solution for the 1.3 billion poor people, the 1.25 billion people without power. So those people are the ones which, ha which have the impact as a result of um, pollution and climate change. They're the ones that feel it. And so you've got solar thermal energy, which literally is based upon, the, you know, you know, like you go in front of a window and you can feel the heat yeah. behind the window, yeah? The sun's light is focused. You know about focused light, if you hold a magnifying glass over a piece of paper and the sun's light goes through it, it intensifies the beam and it creates um, a hot um, uh, surface beneath, which then heats up and, and causes the, the leaves or whatever to catch up the light. You've also got solar voltaic. Everyone say, everyone say photo. Volta. Say photo. Photo. It means light, yeah? And I'll say voltaic. Oh, voltaic. Right, so basically, photo voltaic. It's um, light electricity, essentially. So we've got solar thermal energy, which you'll see here for cooking. This is innovation, basically, in the development world where they get aluminium and they heat up their, uh, their, their and they cook. You've got solar uh, water heating, where um, if you go to the next slide, um, we'll look at PV again, but with solar um, water heating, you'll have a surface and a glass which heats then piping beneath, which I'll show you on the next slide. But you've got several different types of solar. I've got four here. Uh, polycrystalline, uh, we've got monocrystalline, hybrid, which is a combination of different solar, and then also all black solar, which, which aids um, the ability of sun collection in different climates. So for example, if you take a, fold to, uh, a polycrystalline panel and you put it in the middle of, um, um, let's say, uh, Sudan or um, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, it's not going to be very good because it will have microscopic cracks in the solar panel. Whereas if you have a hybrid panel, these types of hybrid panels can actually produce more energy because it can go up to higher temperatures. And so then that is a viable solution for communities. And I'm, I'm just completely perplexed why in this generation we're still using fossil fuels. <laughs> We've got the technology for it. There's so much technology that exists. In fact, if you take what you call semiconducting coils, you can collect radio energy. Everyone hold up their phone. Everyone hold up the phone. Um, before we, can, well, by the time, when we get to the end of this, I want you to sort of hashtag um, end climate change yeah, or something like that on your social media. These produce an energy signature. There is a electromagnetic wave which goes directly to this and it transmits and receives. And everyone's got one of these. Now, there's ways to collect that energy. Did you know that? With semiconducting coils. There's even atmospheric radio waves that you can collect the energy from. And this is the type of knowledge that exists, but why isn't this being pushed out? Why isn't innovation being pushed in renewables? This is where we now have to come collectively together as a global network, a universal network, speaking the same language to disrupt the norm. The norm destroys, the norm tears down, the norm takes from people's lives. The norm causes sickness, it causes illness, it causes more poverty, it causes lack of education. I mean, there's so many ill effects as the result of, of 
bad government, <laughs> of corruption, of pollution. And so if we look at how we can get, let's say, water solar heaters in our houses, we don't need to then rely upon British gas, right, here in the United Kingdom. So solar water is, uh, heating is, is a lot cheaper. So you could maybe split the bill, maybe do 50% with solar thermal, and you can do maybe 50% on the grid. And then you're cutting your power grid, your power um, consumption, aren't you? And um, you're also then uh, being renewable, and it's cheaper than photovoltaic. And this is how it works. You literally got a solar. Well, this is an electric version, but um, you might have a, a solar panel which powers an electric filament inside of a water tank, which then heats up. That the, uh, heats it up. You've got um, them on the roof, and they're in, installed. So just keep them in my hand. Right. Um, solar water heating is the most efficient. It's the most uh, uh, economical as well. Um, and uh, it's, it's ideal for actually taking into the developing world uh, to, to help with power. In fact, Kenya, uh, Kenyatta, President Kenyatta is actually in Kenya, passed a, a, um, a rule that every single uh, new build must have this solar water heating. Next slide. So you've got basically a filament. Uh, so you might have a, a, a wire, a couple, sorry, a wire which is underneath a, sh a sheet of glass, which then the sun's heat then heats up the uh, water which is inside of the filament, uh, the tubings rather, underneath, and then you have got um, some hot water. Next slide. Solar cooking. This is another way. Now, I don't have a slide for, I don't have enough time to, for the, for the, the, to put the slide in. Um, I'm going to tell you how Paul de Voltiac works just quickly, and I'm going to be a bit interactive with it, okay? So, this is how it works if you've never known how it works. Can I take some volunteers, please? No. Is that you mind? Is that okay? So I, can, I need more volunteers than that. Volunteers, please. And, and new, new, come to the front, please. Just come right here. This is the front. Great. I need a few more volunteers, please. Just a few more volunteers. I want you to all stand in the line. Stand in the line just over here. And I want, to, I want you to bunch yourselves up. Just bunch yourselves up. Like, like this, like this. Bunch yourselves up really tight. Come a couple of further forward. Good. And, and, and create, 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 create. Like, yeah, there we go. That's it. Bunch yourselves up. Good. Right now. <clears throat> Now, basically, basically, what I'd like you to do, John, John, I'll tell you, are you, I'd like you to do, what I'd like you to do is, um, you're going to pretend that you're a light beam, a light beam, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. We're called photons, everyone say photon. <laughs> Good. And you guys are called electrons, say electron. Yeah. Good stuff, can you have the next slide please? All right, so a solar calculator, right? This is, this is how the solar panel works. So we are photons, we have a positive charge. And you guys are electrons, you don't like, the, you don't like us at all because you guys are negatively charged and we're positively charged. So what we're gonna do, in fact, just move out a little bit, block our space. We're gonna run towards them, okay? Okay, wait, go! Okay, stop, stop. You guys have to move out of the way. Okay, go back again. Let's do it again. So we are essentially photons. You guys have got to move out of the way. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're going to move. Go. Move out of the way. Move out of the way. Move out of the way. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Go sit back down. Great. Very much. Now, now, essentially, what happens? You see, as they move. They have a, a, a movement, energy, right? Now, everyone do this in front of your face, right? Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay, now, you have what's known as what you call a drift current. You understand? A drift current. So as the photons hit the electrons, it causes all the electrons to literally do that. They move out of the way. They find somewhere else to occupy. And that creates what you call a drift current. Now the drift current, you simply take the drift current off and you put it into a battery. Mm -hmm. And that's how solar works, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's all taken from science, from plants. Mm -hmm. So, solar calculators have been used for long ago. Now you know how solar works as well. I didn't have a slide to show that. I thought the best way to do it is going to be this way. And um, if you focus the light, you can achieve great heat. You can achieve great heat. There was actually um, there was some research that NASA put into this a while ago, 
where they were trying to create an X rocket, which is where they heated up essentially hot air, and and that hot air basically then pressurized to cause you know something to to come up. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened to the research, but it really was focused around um, trying to heat up things. And if we focus our energies, all of us collectively as a group of people that understand what climate change does, understand what pollution does, understand what impact and negative impact it has on individuals and people, if we collectively focus our energy, collectively focus our lighting, then what happens is that we then begin to change and disrupt. We begin to save the planet. We begin to appreciate our environment. We begin to understand more about the place that we live in, the earth. So what I say to you today is, I want you to turn the power off when you're in the, home, in the house. Turn the power off when you're not there. Turn the switches off and unplug when you're not using. Don't leave the television on standby. Think about other ways to heat your food. Microwaves use an enormous amount of energy. <coughs> enormous. Enormous. Anything with a filament uses a lot of energy. So I want you to think cleverly. I want you to research also ways in which you can save power at home. And I want you to turn the power off and save the planet. Thank you very much.